As you watch this video, you are one of two people. You either change your beliefs every few years, like a beautiful butterfly, looking back, thinking, man, my former self was a moron, poetically after dinner. My younger self was so naive, if only they knew what I knew now. Your second type of person, the same belief since you were 15. I was right then, I'm right now, I'll be right in the future. But I knew I was right, very firm, gosh darn it. Never changed my beliefs. But there's this idea that revolutionized my way of thinking. It's called belief probability. I realized all my beliefs exist on a gray scale. They're never 100% certain or 0%. I have beliefs about myself. One belief about myself is that I'm a good driver. And I believe I'm a good driver based on certain evidence. I started driving when I was 16. The fact that I can drive stick shift. The fact that I have quick reflexes. The fact that I wear hats like this. I mean, anybody who is a good driver wears hats like this. If you don't see a man wearing a hat like this, it means they're a bad driver. Only, only good men, good drivers wear hats like this. That's a real man's hat. All these pieces of evidence inform my belief that I'm a good driver. But I did get in that car crash. Now, I have a theory for why I got in that car crash that allows me to keep my belief that I'm still a good driver. It's because Grandma Sally there, half blind, was speeding through the, the red light, knocked up on Ambien, T-boned me, totally wasn't my fault. That's one theory. The other way of thinking about this is thinking what is the probability that good drivers get in car accidents and what is the probability that bad drivers get in car accidents? Make me a bad driver that I got in a car accident? No, but I shouldn't automatically dismiss the new piece of evidence. What I should do is insert it into my belief probability. Meaning if I had a 95% belief probability in my brain that I was a good driver and then I got in a car accident, perhaps the probability I'm actually a bad driver is a little higher and the probability I'm a good driver is a little lower. My belief probability that I'm a good driver is now 87%. So when somebody asks me, are you a good driver, boss wiki? I say, my belief probability that I'm a good driver based on the evidence is 87%. Now, I never say this, this would make no sense, I would sound like a robot, but understanding this is how your brain is thinking, even though we don't communicate it, revolutionary way of thinking about the world and interacting with humans. There's a second part of belief probability that is revolutionary in its own right. It has to do with Bayes' nets. So this belief probability is based on Bayesian statistics a little bit. That's why it's counterintuitive. But Bayes' nets means that all secondary beliefs are automatically updated when a core belief is updated. Computers do this really well. Humans do this really poorly. <laughs> go back to my belief that I'm a good driver. So I got in that car accident, because Grandma Sally was just knackered, typical boomer, typical greatest generation, greatest generation at causing car wrecks. The fact that I still got in that car accident, just as it changed my belief probability in me being a good driver, should also change perhaps the fact that I believe I have quick reflexes. Because if I really did have quick reflexes, maybe I could have dodged old Grandma Grandma World War I there. Zoomed right around her, had Siamese Dream on, just chilling, fast and furious moves, no problem. Yeah, Grandma ran the red light, but I had really quick reflexes, dodged her. The fact that I didn't means maybe I should update my belief about quick reflexes too. Now my belief probability that I have quick reflexes is only 79%. And realizing that when you augment one core belief, all the cascading secondary beliefs that inform your first belief need to get updated as well. Just as I updated my belief, my confidence that I'm a good driver, it went down slightly, I should update the confidence that I have quick reflexes based on new evidence. Equally, if I'm catching glasses of wine as they fall off the table and pressing everybody's wives at dinners in the Upper East Side, maybe I do have quick reflexes. I can update my belief probability that I do now I'm 92% confident I have really quick reflexes. Because I'm more confident I have quick reflexes, that can inform the belief that I am indeed a good driver. You see how these things are all interconnected? That's belief probability. Revolutionary way of thinking. That's the video. You know what it is, guys. Leave a like. Smash the like button. Leave a comment. Subscribe once. Subscribe twice. Screw with the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe three times. Delete your Facebook. Think that helps. <laughs> Something like that. Thanks for watching, guys. See you soon.
I realized all my beliefs exist on a gray scale. They're never 100% certain or 0%. I think I'm an articulate speaker. I believe that my son is doing well in school. I believe the neighbor, Bob, is not cheating on his wife. These are all beliefs I have, but they're based on a confidence interval. I wrote it down just to remind me to insert it into my brain like a line of code. My brain is like Windows 95. Smoking cigars. Nah, he's out there mowing the lawn. He's not cheating on his wife. He's got two dogs, checks the mail every day. 